Farmers today are facing rising costs, volatile markets, and extreme weather. The A Better Way to Farm podcast digs into strategies to help you take control of farm inputs and maximize profit so your farm can thrive for generations. Remember to take advantage of our free resources at abetterwaytofarm.com. Now, from America's Heartland, here's your host. Hello, and welcome back to the A Better Way to Farm podcast. We're excited to have you here. Thank you for tuning in. And we're just honored to get to be a little bitty part of your life. Today, we want to talk about simple tweaks to boost your soybean yields. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about three specifically to help you have a better year. Guys, right here at A Better Way to Farm, where we improve yields and increase profits. And this year, I think it's more important than ever to pay attention to our soybeans. You know, obviously, in these times of really tight margins, it's going to make us push to do everything we can as perfectly as possible in order to make some money. It's really funny because oftentimes guys don't manage their soybeans like they manage their corn. We often joke here at A Better Way to Farm that if your program for your soybeans is plant them, spray them, cut them, and complain about them, that is not a high management program. And that is not going to get us to the next level where we want to go. We find that many farmers have hit a wall somewhere in that 50 to 60 bushel range, and they don't know how to break through. It is very common. We get calls from guys that say, man, our corn yields are great. We're doing 250. We're doing 265. We're doing 285. But our bean yields are stuck at 50 to 60. So what do we got to do? Well, the only thing I know to do is manage the beans like we manage the corn. And here's the good news. Small management tweaks can lead to really big yield gains. So what can you look for in this episode? First of all, three research-backed strategies that farmers use to hit 70-plus bushel beans. Practical, real-world solutions that you can apply this season. And some stories and examples and tips of how you can make better decisions on your farm. Let's dive right into number one, population. We would encourage you to consider lowering your population in order to make more money. Oftentimes, more seeds does not equal more bushels. Now, before we get into the argument, because invariably on social media in print, we end up with a lot of people who want to argue. Here, you have to plant 165. Here, you have to plant 185. Here, here, here. It's different, it's different, it's different but they've never ran the test. You're gonna hear me say these words multiple times. Run the test. Guys will literally argue longer with me about what the right population is than it would take to run the test. It's a simple concept, just do it. Unlike corn, soybeans will branch out more if we give them enough space. Higher populations create unnecessary competition between plants. Higher populations can create an environment that lets disease flourish. What's the optimal population range? I need you to figure that out on your farm. Overall, as we talk to growers across the Midwest, 125,000 plants tends to deliver the best ROI. Oftentimes, the 125,000 population delivers the best yield and it does it with less seed. So how are we going to test this on your farm? It's simple. I'd like you to do something completely off the chart. Start at 85,000. You guys can adjust those populations often from right from your tractor seat. You can change those populations. So start in and make a pass or two passes at 85,000. Raise it by 10 or 15,000 every time you go through the field and run it all the way up to the other end. Go higher than what you're already doing. Guys, this is a test that will not cost you much money. It will not cost you much time, but it will help you to determine and ascertain what it is that's gonna work the best in your operation. Many, many farmers have been surprised to find out that lower populations actually improve their yield. Share a couple stories with you. The first one is about a friend of mine named Travis. Travis farms with his dad, they live up north. And they had been planning, I believe, 185,000 was what they thought they needed to do. And so the, I convinced them to run the test. They ran the test. And lo and behold, Travis called that fall. And he was all excited, all jazzed up because he said, hey, Rod, guess what? He said, you were right. 125,000 was the population that yielded the most bushels. 
Not only did it make the most money, it yielded the most bushels. I said, that's fantastic. He said, so guess what dad decided we're going to do next year? I said, plant 125,000. He said, nope, we're going to drop from 185 down to 160. And I just put both my palms on my face. I don't know, guys. When you run the test, when you get the data, maybe you should go with it. And if you want to run it multiple years, that's fine. Because I get guys, well, it worked one year. But I don't mean it's going to work another year. You're probably right. So keep running it. But as you keep running it and you get more and more consistency, guys, this is one of the things that you can do to really change your return on every acre and take it from negative to positive. Why not use less seed and get more bushels and swing that profit meter over into the plus? Have another friend from up north, his name is Mike. And Mike reached out and said, our corn yields are great. Our bean yields are not. Help me. And he'd been trying to get someone locally to do that and it hadn't happened. And we worked through some things and we stopped treating his beans like a cover crop or a fill-in crop. And we started treating them like a cash crop, like they are. And he cut his population and he started to manage them. And all of a sudden he went from 50 bushel beans to 60 and then to 70 and then to 80. And of course, in true farmer fashion, he said, the next time we get together, we're going to talk about how we're going to get to the next level. And I love that. I think it's fantastic to keep working. Guys, I get the objection over and over and I'm going to hit it again. I've always planted 160,000, or I've always planted 180,000. Won't I lose yield? I have three words for you. Run the test. Run the test, run the test, run the test. Guys, why do we want to argue about this when we can run the test for very little investment, for very little time, and we will know exactly what works? I don't know what's going to work in your area, and therefore I'm not going to sit here and say this is what you need to do. What I am going to tell you is what you do need to do is run the test and see. Don't take someone else's word for it. Go get it. If you manage your spacings, if you manage your row width, if you manage your emergence, lower populations will win. Tip number two, run the test. Except this time we're going to run the test for soybean cyst nematode. Why? because we want to run that test before it steals you blind. Soybean cyst nematode is the number one yield robber of soybeans in the United States, and it has been for years and years and years. A lot of farmers don't even realize they have a problem. If they do realize it, it's only after they've lost significant yields. Why does testing matter? Well, number one, soybean cyst nematode will build up over time. This is not a one-time thing. It's not one and done. Once they get there, they're there. And they're going to continue to be there. Testing through Midwest Labs is affordable, and you can identify those infestation levels, and then you can determine what it is that you need to do about it. What's the impact on yield? Well, everything that I've read, the people who I respect in this industry, have all said it's very common to lose 10 to 30 bushels per acre. I would also say that the people that I respect say that it takes 15 bushel yield loss for us to see a visual difference. Holy cow, guys. We say, well, I looked out there. I don't think I've got any problems. I don't think I'm suffering any yield drag as a result of SCN. Yeah, and then we might have lost 14 bushel and not even be able to see it. Run the test. I'm pretty big on running the test, apparently. How are you going to manage this once you determine how much you have? Number one, we're going to start using SCN resistant varieties and we're going to rotate those in order to get better results. Number two, we're going to take a look and use at using a proven soybean cyst nematode suppression product. And the amount of that product will be in direct relationship to the infestation levels. And if you say, I don't see any signs of SCN in my field, I still reply with, you often won't until it's way too late. Tip number three, adding manganese to your glyphosate pass. What's the problem? Well, we know that glyphosate blocks the uptake of nutrients. And in particular, it's really hard on manganese. When we use glyphosate, we oftentimes create a manganese deficiency in our soybeans. Manganese is essential for photosynthesis, nodulation, plant health. It's also responsible for emergence. What's the fix? This one's easy. Boys and girls, this is so simple. We just simply co-apply a high quality chelated manganese with your glyphosate pass. But it has to be 100% chelated 
or it will render your glyphosate ineffective and the manganese won't work. 100% chelation. If you're interested in how it is you can determine if you have 100% chelation, you can reach out to us. We can help you with that. What's it going to do? It's going to reduce that yellow flash and keep those plants actively growing. What's the impact on yield? Trials show anywhere from 2 to 15 bushel increase just by adding manganese to your glyphosate. Guys, this is easy. If you're already spraying, it's just a little upgrade here that requires no extra trips. It's interesting because I talked to multiple farmers. Jerry spoke at our last Fundamentals of Agronomy training, and he talked about the fact that he used manganese on every acre when he was spraying glyphosate because he had seen the results over and over and over again, knowing he was picking up at least two bushel to the acre. So let's recap our three strategies, guys. Let's talk about lower population and letting those plants branch out for a better light capture. Let's talk about testing for SCN and identifying those hidden problems before they cut your yield and then talk about how we're gonna manage around it. And number three, let's add manganese to the glyphosate. Let's prevent those deficiencies and boost plant health all in one easy pass. Guys, we absolutely encourage on-farm trials of all of the above. We just know that this is one of the things that you can do, three of the things that you can do to make things better. Here's the bottom line. I don't care how skeptical you are. Try these tweaks on a few acres this year. The data doesn't lie. Guys, if you have questions or you want help dialing in these strategies, shoot us a message. Reply with the word soybeans or reach out on social media and we will help you make a plan. Thank you for tuning into the podcast. If you like what we do, if you like what we're given, share us with a friend. We love sharing information. We love helping people. And we would love to help you grow extra soybeans. As a matter of fact, I have one more exciting tip, and I'm going to save that for another episode. But there's one more thing that guys are doing to get tremendous results in growing those soybeans. We appreciate you tuning in. Share us with a friend. And we look forward to talking to you real soon. We really do hope you're having a better day.